Today's lesson is going to cover what we call number properties. Now the first number property we're going to look at is called the commutative property. And now the key word in commutative property is commute. If we think about commuting to go somewhere, you go there and then you come back. All of you commuted this morning to school. You came to school and hopefully you're all going home. So let's have a look at an example of the commutative property. Let's say for example, I have the problem. 5 plus 3. I could switch the places of the numbers and still come up with the same answer. We know that 5 plus 3 is 8. Now the commutative form of this would be to write down 3 plus 5. And like we said before, we still get the answer of 8. So commutative property for addition it's writing down a problem and getting an answer, switching the places of the numbers, and still coming up with the same answer. We know that addition has a commutative property because it doesn't matter which order the numbers are in, we're going to come up with the same answer either way. Now addition is commutative, but multiplication problems can be as well. Let's have a look at one of those. Let's say we have three times five. We know that that's 15. Now commutative property of multiplication would be similar to addition where we just switch these numbers. Let's make it now say five times three, which is also 15. The numbers have changed places, but we still have the same answer. So whenever we're working with commutative property, we know that it can be addition or multiplication. And we can go from one place to the other and still have the same answer. Next, we're going to look at something that's called the associative property. When looking at the associative property, we have to think of the word associate. If you associate with somebody, you're friends with them, you hang out with them. An associative property is similar to that because we're going to have numbers that are grouped. And if they're grouped, we can think of them as hanging out with each other. So let's have a look at the associative property. Let's say we have 1 plus 2 plus 3. We know we're going to come up with an answer of 6. 2 plus 3 is 5, plus 1 is 6. Now, if we use the associative property, what we're going to do is regroup the numbers. The problem won't change, so therefore we're still going to come up with the same answer. So we read this one as 1 plus 2 plus 3. Okay, now I'm just going to come up with a new group. Let's say I start with my group this time. 1 plus 2 plus 3. 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 3 is 6. So we came up with the same answer. Remember, to associate means to be with, to hang around. So these numbers are hanging around each other. Here we have a group that is also friends with this number 1. Well, this time around the number 1 hangs, wants to hang around with the number 2, but they're still associating with 3. So one key thing to remember is with the associative property, there are always going to be some form of grouping. There are always going to be a group of numbers with one other friend on the side that they still associate with. Next, we're going to look at what's called the identity property. The identity property is really easy to remember because you should think of your own identity, who you are. You can't change who you are, and the identity property of numbers is really similar to that because the numbers won't change. For example, one form of the identity property is to add zero to a, num to a number. So let's say we have four plus zero. It ends up being four. Because whenever you add a zero to a number, you don't change it. So the four's identity hasn't been changed. It stays the same. It started off as four, it's still four. We can also use multiplication for the identity property, and it's by multiplying a number times one. So this is what the identity property of multiplication looks like. Let's keep this 4, but now I want to multiply it by 1. 4 times 1 remains 4. Whenever you multiply a number by 1, it's unchanged. So this 4 
its identity hasn't changed. So what you need to remember for the identity property is it's either adding zero to a number because it won't change or multiplying the number by one because it won't change. So the identity property is a property where the original number doesn't change. Last but not least, we're going to look at something that's called the distributive property. Now, if you think of distributing, you're passing things out. You're sending it somewhere. In the distributive property, what we're going to want to do is pass or hand out this number because I want to multiply it by the other numbers in the problem. Now, if we look at this problem, it's asking us what is 2 times 15. Now, in order to distribute 2 to the 15, I actually need to split this 15 up and turn it into an addition problem. So I have to ask myself, what two numbers can I add together to make 15? Or I can ask myself, what's the place value of the 1 and what's the place value of the 5? Well, this is a kind of easy one. We know that 10 plus 5 is 15, so that's my addition problem. I'm going to rewrite it here. The 2 stays the same. The 2 times, we said 15 could be 10 plus 5. So it now ends up being 10 plus 5. And now what I want to do is take this 2 and distribute it to both of the numbers. So the multiplication stays the same. First problem, 2 times 10. I'm going to distribute it out. That ends up being 20. Now I want to take my 2 and distribute it out to the other number. 2 times 5 is 10. We had addition in the middle, so I'm going to bring that down. 20 plus 10 is going to give me an answer of 30. Now if I wanted to, I can go back and check my work. Is 2 times 15 30? Yes, it is. So now I know that I did this problem the right way. Now remember, the key was to turn the number inside the parentheses into an addition problem and then to distribute or multiply the outside number by both of those, add them together, and we get our final answer, which is called the distributive property.